I hated Zig's build system when I first started learning Zig. I just wanted to install a freaking package and it was so confusing and such a pain. Uh, I couldn't just NPM install or do the Zig equivalent. And um, yeah, it was really, really rough. It was frustrating to no end at first. However, uh, I've used it for a little bit and I have really, really come to like Zig's build system. Uh, so what I have up right now is our build file. So this is a build.zig if you haven't seen one before. Um, the key thing here is that although this function looks imperative, its job is to declar declaratively construct a build graph that will be executed by an external runner. That build graph would be maybe something similar to what gets generated from like a package JSON, except this is way more powerful. Um, Comparing it to a package JSON is very unfair. In fact, a better comparison would probably be to like a make file or something that is uh, actually able to do a lot. Um, I, that's not super clear, but hopefully that'll this will clarify as we go. Uh, so you can specify targets. So I have standard target options. This allows you to uh, specify like which uh, architecture or operating system you're wanting to build for. Um, there's information on the standard targets as well. Uh, standard optimization here. Um, so the key thing is that by choosing standard targets and standard optimizations, the person running Zig build can select which one they want. Uh, so it's not predetermined for them. I'm also adding an additional option here. This is an option for the exe name. And the reason why I'm choosing to do this is because when I build this with GitHub Actions, I build five different executables. I build one for Windows and then two for Mac and two for Linux, uh, both for x86 architecture and then a uh, smaller ARM type style architecture. Okay, uh, so in this graph, we're also adding an executable. So this b.addExecutable is build.addExecutable. Um, so we're adding an executable to the graph that we're producing. You can see that I'm using that exe name that I've specified uh, seven lines above here. So this is choosing the name of that executable. And then target is being used as well as, uh, as well as optimize. And then the key thing that isn't configurable is the path to the main zig file. You can make it configurable if you want. I don't necessarily know why you would, um, but you might find a reason to. And zig supports that with its build system. I have an external dependency on Zig DateTime. This was very frustrating to work with at first uh, because it confused the heck out of me. But um, now I've found out that it's not that bad. Uh, one key thing is depending on your version of Zig, this line right here may be different. So if you're on 13, uh, it's exe.rootmodule.addImport. If you're not on Zig 013, um, it is exe.addImport. Uh, that was part of my frustration. All the documentation I was finding was pointing towards the older version, um, but that's changed. But that's changed. Uh, so, yeah, what else? Uh, that dependency, there's one more piece to that, and we'll get to that in just a second. Um, I have a uh, install artifact step. So this declares the intent for an executable to be installed into the standard location where the user invokes in the install step. Uh, so it's the default step when running zig build, so you're going to want that. Um, this creates a run step into the build graph, so this allows us to type zig run, uh, zig build run, I should say. Uh, which will run everything that is necessary to build it and then um, actually execute the program. And then uh, we have another step that we are saying the run command depends on, which is the install step. Uh, so we get the install step and we have to make sure that we install before we run. And then we check to see if there are any arguments. And if there are any arguments, we call run command add args. So we're adding those arguments to the run command. You can see that the run step here, this adds a step. Um, and the key thing here is that it uh, allows you to type in zig build run, um, but it also shows up in the help menu. So if you type zig build dash dash help, it will show up there as well. Uh, the run step depends on the run command step. That kind of makes sense. Um, there's information about adding unit tests. So this gives us a zig test, uh, zig build test, I should say. Um, and it's kind of the same thing you see with run, except this one is for unit tests. Um, but yeah, that's a zig build file. So, uh, the one thing we didn't talk about is big is build.zig.zon. Uh, so Zon Zigzon, I'm not entirely sure what the name is, uh, but it is essentially the package manager, uh, to the build system. So this is the NPM to the make file. Um, so what I'm able to do here is I can specify the name of my package so that other people can depend on it. I can specify the version of my package. I can specify the minimum zig version that you need. Uh, currently this is only advisory only. It doesn't actually do anything. Um, I probably need to up this to 13 because I built with 13. 
And then you can see here that I've added a dependency on zig date time. Uh, and that's the key thing that I really wanna highlight here is that I've added a dependency. It's a git dependency. It points to this repo. Um, it's referring to the head. And then there's a hash uh, that is associated with all of this. And that hash is to verify the integrity of that and uh, cache it. So uh, with those together, what we can do, excuse me, there we go. What we can do is we can run zig build uh, and we can actually build our executable. So if we see that, we can see that there's a zig out folder here. It goes into the bin folder and I have a couple of previous builds in here that I've ran, but we just generated the ADL. Um, as you can see right here, today's January 4th, January 4th ADL, uh, and then some older versions that have been generated in the past as well. One last thing while we're here, because I mentioned it. So we have a GitHub folder, workflows, release. I mentioned that I build uh, those five different versions. Here's what that command looks like for each of those. So they run as independent uh, steps in a GitHub action. So you can see here, zig build d target x86, 64 windows, d optimize, release safe. I'm, there's optimizations that you can do with zig, so you can optimize for performance, uh, you can optimize for file size, uh, you can optimize for safety. Um, and then there's, I think there might be even be a fourth, which is just a general purpose optimization. Um, I was really happy with the file size of this, so I didn't need to shrink it any further. Uh, not super worried about the performance because it's tiny, so safety is what was most important to me. So that's the one I chose to optimize for. Uh, and then you can see here that we have that exe name. So ADL Windows, ADL Mac, um, and then the architecture added to the end of it. Uh, once these run and it builds, I use this GitHub action for releasing, uh, soft props action gh release at v2. Um, so I'm checking to make sure that the GitHub ref is a tag. So if I were to push a new tag to this repo, it will run. Um, these, these run every step, actually. But the release only runs on uh, tags. And what it does is it takes all of those files that get generated and then uploads them to uh, GitHub. on releases. So you can see them right here. And there you go. So that's how I handle building my Zig CLI. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. I would love to hear about your use for Zig. I have quite a few people who pop up on Zig videos uh, with comments, uh, and they seem to get a lot of traction according to YouTube's analytics. So I want to know what you're building with Zig because I have uh, really, really been enjoying my time learning it. And what started out as a language that I was really uncertain about, I am becoming more and more enamored with. So let me know in the comments below and let's have a chat about it. Have a great day.